if anyone in Golden Street had anything to do with boats, I met them. If you didn't want to talk about boats, then you probably went somewhere else. Oh, I was only a small time boat builder. Well, the fellow asked me to build a boat for him, so, you know, he thought I'd get out and have a go. So, took the glow on She said, yeah, well, why not? We'll have a bit of a go. So, I just built his boat and we kept rolling on after that. I was a singer. He was a boat builder. He knew nothing about music. I knew nothing about boats. Uh, but it worked quite well. The community in Norman Park was Fred, his boat shed and next door, Golby and Bain, and the foundry over the road. So that really was it. So basically everything revolved around the boat shed. He was always a meticulous builder. He maintained that any part of the boat you couldn't see was just as important. Back after the Second World War, this place used to be a, a machine shop. Going back to about 1960, a guy built a, a really big sailboat here, 50 foot. Somebody was building smaller bay cruisers in wood. There were people making dinghies and firetail yachts were built here. Basically, you'd come and see Fred and tell him what you wanted, whether you wanted a trawler, a pleasure cruiser, how long you wanted it, where you were going to use it, and then he would draw up the plans. Well, these were two of the half models that Fred made. The top one's a yacht, and the other one is more of a cruiser shape. They are a scale model. Uh, they're done in two colours of timber, so you can see the actual defined lines because they would be important lines in the structure of the boat. Just take myself and maybe, maybe a mate, about 18 months. That's the finish. Oh, it used to be thousand dollars a foot, but you know, then it sort of went out of hand after that. Sometimes they'd have to use a crane to lift a boat if it was on being built on the land instead of being in the shed and could be slipped. And someone said to me, don't you worry? And I said, oh, you never worry unless Fred looks worried. And I looked over and it was our boat and he looked worried. And I said, oh. In the shed to the water, I used to have to make a cradle up, roll the boat out. Then I used to pull the fence down, the crane would come in and lift the boat and put it in the, in the drain we floated out that way. Oh, always, big party for the, the naming. Oh, we used to put the keg on or whatever, <laughs> have a few beers and have a big night. <laughs> he didn't consider the company suitable after a certain time, after they'd all had a, several drinks and what have you, and he'd say, I think it's time for someone to take the mother home. It wasn't just building, it was maintenance. Boats were being slipped, bottoms cleaned, refouled, recorked. But I did work out at one stage that uh, it probably cost us the equivalent of an overseas trip a year. But there was a glass come in and aluminium. Took a lot out of the boat build. You'd see the writing on the wall sort of thing and, you know, had to do other things, you know. All well, the good boat builders were gone. In the last 
15 years or so, people were just buying imported boats and when they're finished with them, they sell them. If you spend all your money on your house, then you're not gonna spend much on, on, on a boat. There's boats at moorings that have just been forgotten about. It's really sad when you see a, a boat just mouldering away. A nice yacht just further up from us, but it's about one year away from having a whopping great big hole in the side, which is so sad. Thank you.